when one month is there to go, then what do you do? Then yes, the books come out from the library. They are in front of you. You are studying. And at the same time, if your favorite football match is on, you're watching the match as well. And in between, you also doze off. That's what goes on. And you're studying, of course you're studying. What happens when one day is left? Then, then you will burn the midnight oil. If necessary, you might stay up all night, one cup of coffee after the other. And even if your parents come and say, come on, rest, please don't disturb me. You know what? It's the last part of the cricket match. Don't you want to see? It's really exciting. I don't want to know anything. Please just leave me alone. You are totally, totally concentrated. You don't want any kind of disturbance. And what happens when one hour is left? You're busy looking at the little short notes and everything that you need to go through. You're totally oblivious of what is happening around you. Nothing distracts you at all. When you're sitting to write down the paper, then do you think of your mom? You think of your dad? You think of your girlfriend, your boyfriend? What you're going to have for dinner tonight? Not at all. Nothing crosses your mind. You're totally concentrated on writing, writing, writing. Even if there's an accident outside and there's so much of noise, or maybe a marriage uh, party is going by, so much of drums beating and so much music, you heard nothing, absolutely. The concentration, just think of that. Why? Because you are very concerned. If I fail, then I'll end up losing a year. Right? We are very careful about that, very concerned about that. Now, just think, whilst we were writing that paper, usually papers, either it's a two hour exam or it's a three hour exam, right? Now for those three hours, you know for certain that nobody can snatch the paper away from you. Unless of course you're copying or something. But if you're not, nobody can. No teacher can, no principal can snatch the copy from your hand. You have your three hours. It's only when the bell goes that they can take the paper from you. So there is a guarantee that you have three hours. And this human life, do we have a guarantee of three hours? You heard the story of uh, Yudhishthir, one of the Pandavas. He was approached by a poor Brahmin who wanted some charity to get his daughter married. Yudhishthir was a very generous person. And he said to him, definitely, I'll give you what you want, but please come back tomorrow, I'm busy today. The Brahmin said, okay, that's fine. And uh, at that time, Yudhishthir's brother, Bhim, was standing over there and he heard this conversation. He immediately went out, he called the minister and he called everybody, come on, go out into the kingdom and tell everybody that they have a holiday today. They can enjoy themselves and no work. It's a holiday. When Yudhishthir went out and he saw everybody enjoying themselves, he wondered, I mean, I think I'm working too hard. I don't even know it's a festival today. Is it Diwali? Diwali is tomorrow. Not today. Janmashtami? Is it Christmas? What is it? He got no answer. No, no, we don't know anything what it is. But we got orders from the palace that we have to enjoy a holiday today. Yudhishthir found out one by one by one. Eventually, he came to know that the source was his own brother Bhim. He called him. How come you declared a holiday today? What's happened? Is it your birthday? I'm sorry, I've forgotten. No, it's not my birthday. The reason why I announced it to be a holiday is because you have won a great victory. What victory? There's been no war. What are you talking about? You won a victory over death? What are you talking about? Didn't you tell that Brahmin to come back tomorrow? Yeah. That means you're absolutely sure you're going to be alive till tomorrow, aren't you? So you have one victory over death for one day. 
Yudhishthir realized his mistake and he thought, I thought this brother of mine, he was just huge and fat, but he seems to be having more brains than I do. So in the same way, when we were doing the exam, we knew we had three hours, but about human life. That's why I'm saying that it's so difficult. We know it's true. We know that what's happened to your neighbor, what's happened to your friend, all of a sudden, he went to work, he never reached work, and he died on the way. You hear of so many instances, especially when there are natural calamities, what happens? When the tsunami came a couple of years back, what happened? People died in their sleep. They were swept away in the waves. Unless we constantly tell our minds about it, we tend to be careless. So we don't know whether we're going to have three hours. Now, when we were doing that paper with full concentration, it was due to the fact that we did not want to lose one year. One year of what? What is this education about? Winning bread and butter, right? And this knowledge which we are talking about, this knowledge is going to free you of this business and stress of bread and butter. It's going to free you of all this sea of trouble we are going through since time immemorial. So we are not only going to lose this whole life, but we have already lost millions and millions, in fact, endless lifetimes because we have not remembered this important fact that life is transient. So forget the past, we have to take full advantage of the present and devote ourselves to attaining this divine bliss. How do we go about it? I mentioned to you before that in order to attain God, we need to know him. Gyatva <coughs> shivam shanti Matyanta Meti, Shvetashvatar Upanishad, verse number four, 14. Gyatva Deva Muchate Sarva Pashai, number 6, 13. Sukham Shashvatam Netaresham, verse number 6, 12. Tameva Viditvati Mrityumeti Nanya Pantha Vidyate Anaya, verse number 3, 8 and verse number 615 of the same book of scripture. All these verses are saying, come on, you have to know God in order to attain him. Only then will you be able to attain peace, you will be able to attain eternal happiness, you will be permanently free from all kinds of suffering. Now where do we, how do we find out about God? How do we know him? Who do we ask? Suppose we ask people in this material world, our fellow beings, we are not going to get anywhere because they are just as ignorant as we are. So if we are going to ask them about who God is, then we are going to be like the blind led by the blind. Andhe naivaniyamanaya thanda mundakopnishat Verse number one to eight. Suppose there's a group of blind men standing together and one blind man says, can one of you lead me to the near, nearest bus stop? Another blind person, he wants to have some fun. He said, yes, yes, I can take you. I know where it is. He knows that this man is blind, so he can't see that he's blind as well. So he says to him, Listen, blind man, come and hold my hand and I'll take you to the bus stop. So one blind man holds the hand of another blind man and they walk. They hardly moved a few yards and down they go into a ditch and instead of the bus stop, they end up at the hospital. So this is exactly what will happen to us if we start asking each other about who God is. Then what do we do? Well, I know what I can do. I do not need to ask anybody. I'm well educated. I'm intelligent. 
And there are so many books of scriptures available. The Vedas, the Ramayana, the Puranas, the Gita, the Bible, so many books of scriptures. I can read myself. I can understand and find out who God is. Well, you are totally mistaken. In order to understand what these scriptures are saying, you need to have the intelligence, the level of the intelligence of the writer of those scriptures. Bhagavad Rasik Rasik ki baate Rasik bina ko samaj sake na Only a saint can understand what another saint is saying. Today we have so many ordinary material people writing commentaries on the Gita. I have written a commentary. You've written, you can't even understand what the Gita says. So it is impossible for us because those scriptures are divine. The saints have a divine intelligence and we have material intellects. It is impossible for us to understand what those scriptures say. And besides, there are numerous scriptures, not one, but so many. Shrutir vibhinna, smrita yo vibhinna, naiko munir yasya pramanam. There are lots of scriptures and these scriptures on outward appearance, they seem to be contradictory. <coughs> Even the six philosophical systems of India, if you read the philosophy, you, you will end up going all confused. So when we try to read these scriptures on our own, we will have more confusions than we've had before. Instead of dispelling our doubts, we are going to have confusions. For instance, there are some religions, religions that are totally silent about the existence of God. They preach moral values. There are some religions and scriptures that say God is only impersonal. That means is formless, just an energy. And there are some who say God is personal, God has a form. And there are some that say God is both. He is personal as well as impersonal. Now a person, an ordinary person in the world, when he reads all of them, he's bound to be confused. And not only that, the words in the scriptures, especially the most authentic of scriptures, the Vedas, one word is used at different places and has different meanings. The same word. Yesterday we were talking about King Indra being the king of this abode of heaven which is within the material realm. But mind you, the word Indra has also been used for the supreme being, God. The word Atma or soul, it refers sometimes to God, sometimes to divine personalities like the saints and sometimes to ordinary people. That is people like us who are bound by material Maya. The same word. Now how will we know what it means and where? That's why the scriptures advise us. In fact, the scriptures themselves say, Vibhetyalpa Vedo Mamayam Praharishyati. The scriptures are scared. They say, we fear people who are ignorant, who are material, who are going to read us and misinterpret these divine truths. That's why even Tulsita says, he says, Shruti Purana. Bahu kahe upai chutaina adhik adhik urjai. If we read these uh, book of scriptures on our own, 
that instead of getting liberated, we are going to get more and more trapped. So then what do we do? How do we know about God, which is the authentic way to know about him? All the scriptures are saying we need to know him, know him, know him. Only then you'll attain him. The best way to know about God is to ask God. Ask God. Tell me where I can meet him. I'll ask him. And if I can meet him, I wouldn't be here to listen to you. My goal would be achieved. Well, don't worry. We don't need to meet God to find out from him. He's already told us the answer. Where is the answer? The Vedas, they are the word of God. In fact, the scriptures say, Nishwasita Masya Vedaha. The Vedas are the breath of God himself. Jaki Sahaj Shwas Shruti Chari. From his breath, this eternal knowledge of the Vedas was manifested. Veda Brahmatma Vishaya. Bhagavad Puran, 11th Canto, 21st chapter, 35th verse. The Vedas are the form of God Himself. There's no difference. This divine knowledge and God, they are both the same. That's what these scriptures are saying. So, in fact, the most uh, authentic source of divine wisdom are these Vedas. You will be surprised to know that even great philosophers in the West have uh, accepted these Vedas as authoritative sources of knowledge. And they have bowed down before them. The German philosopher Schopenhauer said, in this whole world, there is no study as elevating as the Upanishads. It has been the solace of my life and it shall be the solace of my death. That's what he's saying. I can get peace from here. That's what he's saying. And uh, referring to the Vedas, Schopenhauer says that these scriptures are almost superhuman conceptions whose originators can hardly be said to be mere men. So in a way he is admitting it cannot be man who's done them. It has to be that supreme being. Max Muller, referring to what Schopenhauer had said about the Vedas, he says, if these words of Schopenhauer require confirmation, then I would be willing to give it as a result of my lifelong study. Max Miller himself said, he said that if one would ask me which literature would give us Europeans that necessary equilibrium to make our life more perfect, more comprehensive, more universal, in short, more human, a life not only for this life, for us, but a life of a transformed and eternal life, I would indicate India. This is what Max Miller is saying. And now listen to the best part. What Schopenhauer has said. He says that I get more out of one page of these ancient, ancient Hindu scriptures than I get out of ten volumes of Western philosophy after Kant. Imagine. One page and ten volumes. It stands no comparison. So you cannot compare Western philosophy 
to this divine wisdom of the Vedas. In fact, there is no comparison at all. It's naive to even think of it. So the Vedas are eternal. They are manifested at the beginning. Eternal truths that are manifested at the beginning of every creation. Now let us find out what these Vedas say about God. That is what God says about himself because it is the word of God. It is said, Na Vedavin Manute Tam Brihanta. One who does not know the Vedas cannot know God. Now you might question my authority of giving you this supreme knowledge. Listen to what the Vedas say. Acharya Van Purushohi Veda. You cannot understand the divine wisdom of the Vedas without guidance from a genuine saint. And this is where I have got this beautiful divine wisdom from. Every word that I am sharing with you, I have heard and learned with the causeless grace of my spiritual master. And the world knows him as Jagat Guru Sri Kripaluji Maharaj. Not only spiritual seekers in the world, but even those who are great teachers of divine wisdom, even they are absolutely awed by his scriptural omniscience. In fact, you could say he is a walking encyclopedia of the scriptures. This is what made uh, the Kashi Vidvat Parishad a body of 500 topmost scholars of Banaras, they honored him with the degree of Jagat Guru when he was only 34 of years of age on 14 January 1957. 